Lord be with you. Good morning. morning. Y'all are all sitting on the back row, I'm told. (laughs) Well, we'll see how this goes. Session meets Tuesday night, and they may decide that this has been fun, but we're going to go back inside. So we'll see, and you will be told. But uh, for the moment, here we are. And uh, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, so let's enjoy it. There are um, announcements on the announcement page, and I'll let you read those, but we have two announcements that um, need to be made verbally. So, Laura and Bob, who's first? You go first. Good morning. So, summer has officially begun for the kiddos and teachers in Catawba County. And, um, but summer school is going to be starting up on June 13th. And I was contacted by a counselor at Webb A. Murray Elementary School, and they are in need of items to restock their clothing closet. And a clothing closet for a school is super important because if a child has an accident or if they possibly come to school in the same clothes, a couple of days um, out of the week, then there's uh, clothes that they can provide a child so that they're in clean clothing and things like that. So they are in need of some items as well as a few school supplies for um, summer school. So on the table in the back, there is a box that has little cards. We're going to do this like the Christmas uh, wishes tree that we do in December. So there are several tags back there, but there's items like packs of underwear for girls, leggings for girls, packs of um, like a pair of sweatpants for boys take as many tags as you want or as little Um, but they will be those items are going to be needed to be due back at the church by June 12th because I will take those items to the school on the 13th all right so we hope you can um, help us because that is a very important um, part of how um, counselors and teachers help their students through the year and Bob As Laura was saying, we are uh, reaching out to the community to find ways that we can serve them and in doing so serve God for, of course, that's what he told us to do was serve your fellow men. And one of the things we're doing uh, is trying to find new ways to use our wonderful facility that we've been blessed with. Every Sunday evening, we're serving between 50 and 70 meals out of the fellowship hall. The Seniors Morning Out group uses our fellowship hall four days a week. We have a homeschool group that's using the uh, classroom facilities and the playground uh, during the week. And we've come up with a a new way to serve our folks that that may not have the necessary necessary shower facilities that we all like to be clean and fresh. Working with the uh, Newton Police Department, uh, Detective Sergeant William Garrett there, uh, we've come up with a plan starting off with one day a week from 5 to 7 p.m. on Tuesdays that we could open our two shower facilities which are down on the youth uh, hall down in the lower level on the back uh, for folks to come in. We would also like to uh, to have some fresh clothes for them to put on if they're uh, it's not much good to take a good hot shower and then put on d- the same dirty clothes you came in on. So if you haven't finished your spring cleaning and you've hadn't cleaned out your closets, if you have some uh, extra clothing that you can donate, that would be wonderful. Primarily, I think, adult men and women, although I understand there may be some families that are living in their vehicles, so it would be... It might be good to have some kids clothes too. We are, we'll have a member of the Newton Police Department on site. He will be there as a volunteer. And also we would need a couple volunteers from the church to open the church uh, to greet our guests and register them. We will uh, have some information in the, in the future. We hope to start uh, on June the 14th. And if, uh, if we have a the res- big response, we'll probably go to two days a week, maybe uh, Tuesday and Thursday from 5 to 7. So keep that on your mind, put it on your heart, and we will be in touch how you can help. Thank you.
Please stand in body or spirit for the call to worship and the prayers. The heavens proclaim your righteousness, O God. And all the peoples behold your glory. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. And we shall give thanks, thanks to God's, God's holy name. Let us worship God and let us pray together. Eternal God, by raising Jesus from the dead, you proclaimed his victory, and by his ascension, you declared him Lord of all. Lift up our hearts to heaven where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today is the day we celebrate the ascension of Jesus into heaven. And so join me in this litany for ascension. Arise, O Lord, in your strength. We will praise you for your glory. Let us pray with joy to Christ at the right hand of God, saying, You are the King of glory. You have raised the weakness of our flesh. Heal us from our sins and restore to us the full dignity of life. You are the King of glory. May our faith lead us to the Father as we follow the road you trod. You are the King of glory. You have promised to draw all people to yourself. That one of us, let no one of us be separate from your body. You are the King of glory. Grant that by our longing we may join you in your kingdom where your humanity and ours is glorified. You are the King of glory.
again. So our Bible story for today, it is time for Jesus to return back to his father in heaven. And before he does that, he gathers his disciples together and he tells them, you know, don't be sad or don't be afraid because even though I'm not going to be with you anymore, God is going to send the Holy Spirit to be with you and to guide you. And after he said this, then he rose into the air and went up through the clouds back into heaven. Now, I have to think, man, as a disciple, what this might have looked like. And the idea that keeps on popping into my head as a visual is, you know, when you go to a building that's got one of the elevators that's entirely made of glass and you can watch the people go up and down in the elevator. Well, the thought that comes to my head is that, Picture if you're standing on the, like, the lobby floor and you're watching people go up in this elevator and eventually they just go up through the ceiling to the other floors and you don't see them anymore. And that's kind of how it must have been for the disciples because Jesus just rose in the air and eventually they couldn't see him anymore. 
Now, that must have been an awesome and powerful moment for these disciples. And a lot of times we can see God's power in his creation, like through the waves and how big they are and when they crash and a crack of thunder and a flash of lightning. And even in a mighty wind that we will hear about next week. But as we're waiting for the Holy Spirit to arrive, let's go and do what Jesus told his disciples, and that's to go back down the mountain and to love others and to serve others and to share his word and God's word with others. And that's what we're called to do, right? So as you go throughout this week, be like one of Jesus' disciples because that is what you are, and go out and help others and love others and share God's word with them while we wait for the spirit to arrive next week. All right. So if you are going to blast, you're going to go with Miss Leanna and you're going to walk safely through the parking lot <laughs> and, um, and go to blast. So before we do that, though, let's say a prayer together. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to show us how to love and care for others. Help us to become more like him every day. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up into heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he replied, It's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he'd said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come again in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. So after all that's happened, they go out onto this mountaintop. This is where Jesus will ascend to the Father. But the disciples think, okay, now finally at last, he is going to take power. They even ask him, is this the time? Is this the time that you're going to restore the throne of David and kick out the Romans and lead the revolution and rise to power and rule? Is this the time? And you know, they're also thinking, well, if, if this is going to happen, what role do we get to play? Will we be lieutenants? Will we be the lesser lords of the realm? You know, the departmental heads, the secretaries of the various ministries? Will our role as friends of Jesus, the FOJ, be recognized? How important will we be? 
I mean, who could blame them? These disciples have been taught since they were old enough to be taught that the Messiah would come and kick out the Romans and rule over Israel and everything will be just like it was or just like they imagined that it was once upon a time. It's, you know, it's hard to get people to leave behind their prejudices and their notions of that they've been taught. And so, in a kind of soft rebuke, Jesus says, no, it's not time. That time is set by the Father. For now, we just wait. Then he tells them to go back to Jerusalem and wait for the Spirit to come. And I imagine that these disciples are thinking, aha, okay, that's how this is going to work. The Spirit is going to come, and then the Messiah will take over. Yeah, so that's what we have to wait for. And they begin to rub their hands together, thinking, now we know the plan. Now we're ready. It's always more fun to be on the inside, you know, to be in the know. And that's kind of human nature. We want to be in the know, and we want to be important. (coughs) That's a desire that we all have, but it's one we have to get over, you know, and move beyond. We all can't be that important. Well, then the text says that Jesus vanishes. He goes up in the air and just disappears into a cloud. And the disciples are just left staring. What just happened? And we see this all the time in movies and on TV, right? People fly, Superman flies, Wonder Woman flies, all those Marvel heroes and all those movies, they all fly. Everybody can fly except us. We can imagine somebody flying. It's kind of weird when you see it like behind the camera and you see it's just a green screen and they're wearing wires and they're just swooping around like a circus performer and not really a good one. But the editing turns it into something, you know, magical and wonderful. But those first century fishermen, they've never seen any of that. They have never seen anyone fly. And so for Jesus just to rise up in the air and vanish, that's mind-bending. They don't know what to think. He just ascends into the clouds. Now, John Calvin thought that the ascension was one of the four most important days in the church calendar. You know, Jesus is born, that's Christmas. And then there's a resurrection, that's Easter. Spirit comes, that's Pentecost. And the other one was the Ascension, which is 10 days before Pentecost. And for our part, we've all but forgotten it. But Cherith Nordling, who is a New Testament scholar, says we don't have a functioning, orienting, real theology of the Ascension. We don't even celebrate it. You know, it was last Thursday. How many of you were here Thursday for, no, we don't celebrate it. But the Ascension says that Jesus is still incarnate. Now this gets a little hard. We think of Jesus, the risen Lord is, yeah, he's still in his human body, but it's kind of different from ours and maybe he's evolving into something spiritual. I mean, he does normal things. He eats meals and eats fried fish and walks through walls, but he also vanishes and appears and and stuff. And so it's different. And if we think about it, when he went into that cloud, he must have dumped his body, right? Did something with it. He must have gotten rid of it and become like what God is. But that isn't right. Jesus is still the God-man, the human being incarnate. God incarnate in human being. Let's put it that way. So when he's seated at the right hand of God, he sits there in a human body. And that's the part that we forget. 
So the risen Lord is the permanent embodied Savior of the universe, our new humanity joined to the life of God. That's Cherith Nordling again. And that means that we need the ascension. And Jesus took our humanity to the cross. We get that part. He died in it. We get that. He was raised in it. Well, okay, we understand that. But the idea that he rose into heaven in his human body and took our humanity into God's presence, that might be new to you. Well, this whole doctrine is anti-Gnostic and anti-Docetic. Now, if you don't want to hear about all that, you can just take your nap now. Gnosticism was an ancient um, philosophy. And it, it said, well, the spiritual is what's important, and human bodies are, are not important. They're evil. They're wrong. We need to lift ourselves out of our human bodies into the spiritual realm. And we do that through gnosis, through special knowledge that you only get from these certain teachers. The physical world is evil. The spiritual world is good. So to be saved is to escape this physical world and all of its, you know, all of its lusts and its, its limitations and go to the spiritual world where everything will be different and beautiful. That's Gnosticism. Do you remember the Hale Bop cult? Heaven's Gate? Those people that put on purple tennis shoes and purple sweatshirts and, and drank purple Kool-Aid and died? laced with poison, I guess. Their leader was a guy named Marshall Applewhite. Marshall Applewhite actually attended Union Theological Seminary in Virginia for a year. I knew a guy who had been in seminary with him, and that guy said, well, he certainly learned his Gnosticism. He didn't learn anything else, but that, you know, he went on and taught these people Gnosticism, and we will go to the spiritual realm, somehow associated with the coming of this little comet. So for Gnostics, the whole idea is to escape our human bodies, to escape humanity. These are a trap, and we need to escape them. And it's kind of easy to see how Christianity attracted the Gnostics. And this text is anti-Gnostic because it says, no, Jesus rose to the Father in his human body. Now, the Docetists were these early Christians who said, well, you know, Jesus only seemed to be human. And the Greek word for seem is dekeo, and so we get Docetist from that. They didn't think that human being was worthy of God Almighty. And so they really deny the incarnation. They say, well, Jesus seemed to be human, but the idea of the incarnation just made them shudder. How could God do that? That's just too filthy and nasty for God to be involved in human bodies. God is a spirit. and would never allow himself to be captured in human flesh. But Jesus takes our humanity and joins it with God. And that means that when we get to heaven, when we get to the presence of God, our humanity is welcomed. I think it'll be perfected, but it's welcomed. So we won't be disembodied spirits sitting on clouds playing harps. Sorry. Harps are very hard to play, by the way. So, you know, you could at least look at that as good news. But what this means is when, when God created the world and called it good, he included us in it. And he means to recreate that world and straighten out all that's gone wrong and sinful and make it good again, and including us, including the animals, including that bird. And our, you know, our pets will be there too, I think. You might remember that exchange a couple decades ago. It was all over the Internet. There was a Roman Catholic church 
and it posted on its sign, all dogs go to heaven. You know, there was a movie a couple decades ago, all dogs go to heaven. So they put that on their sign. And across the street was a very conservative Presbyterian sort of church that said, no, they don't, on their sign. And this kept going back and forth until finally the Catholics put something on their sign like dogs, no, sorry, the Presbyterians put something on their sign like all dogs die and they become just like rocks. And the Catholics put all rocks go to heaven. <laughs> well, I don't know about rocks, but dogs probably do. They're probably up there running around, you know, licking things and waiting on us. So this is a day to be celebrated. Jesus is ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And someone asked once, so does that mean that the Father's hand goes to sleep, you know, from the, the Son sitting on it? Gets all tingly? Of course, it means that Jesus sits at his right hand, not on it. But you get it. And he's wearing our human being. Now, if you're like me, you have been you have been robbed of the possibility of good Trinitarian theology by your well-meaning Sunday school teacher from 50 years ago. Because I was taught that God is a spirit. And God is a spirit, yes. And so God is everywhere. And so Jesus is a spirit, and so Jesus is everywhere. Actually, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. But no matter where you go, Jesus is with you, right? Technically, everywhere you go, the Spirit is with you. And so God, who's Father, Son, and Spirit, is with you in the Spirit. And so Jesus, the Son, exists in his human body at the right hand of the Father. He stays there, though he's everywhere in spirit. That's the better way to be taught, but it's too late now. But that isn't the worst of it. There's a pretty strong Gnostic and Docetic streak in contemporary Christian teachings. A lot of people think, well, this world is bad and the spirit is good and we just got to get out of this world and get to the spirit. I know a preacher who used to say a lot of people are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. You, you, you get the point. Jesus comes not simply to redeem our spirits or our souls or whatever, but to redeem the world. And everybody knows John 3.16, God so loved the world that he came. But nobody knows John 3.17 that notes that the whole world is saved through Jesus. And Jesus comes to save the world and all of us in it, in the messiness of our human flesh. So God created humanity, human flesh, and called it good. God became incarnate in human flesh and called it good. And God redeemed it from sin and says, you're good. So we can take our humanity at least as seriously as God does. Now, I'm going to announce an effort that it's already been announced. The, the police department approached us and said, you got showers. We've noticed the homeless in the community. And, and the homeless, there's only three ways police officers are trained to treat the homeless. One is to put them in jail for the night. The second one is to take them to the hospital and commit them on the seventh floor psychiatric unit. And the third way is to take them to the county line and say, keep going. Go to Hickory. Go somewhere else. Not Hickory. That's in this county. But go away. Well, none of those, the police department felt, are really adequate for every homeless person. So what do we do? How can we help? And one of the things they thought of was, well, we could at least let these people take a shower. I mean, they're trying to look for a job, but they're sweaty no one's going to hire them. But maybe if they had a shower once a week, 
They look better. And so pending session approval, we will open our showers up one night a week. And so this is for people who live in their cars behind big lots or live in the woods so deep we can't find them. It's a concrete way to take people seriously where they are and we can help because we're going to need some towels. So if you've got old towels, bring them. We're going to need some of those little tiny shampoos and soaps that you steal from the hotel. You actually pay for it, so you may as well take them. So we're going to need a bunch of those so they can use those. We're going to need some people. you got to welcome them into the building. Some of them will be scared to come inside because the police are here and they might do something to me. And some of them might be scared to come inside because it's a church, and I went to a church once, and they were mean to me. We want to be welcoming, right? So in the spirit of the risen and ascended Lord, this is something we can do. And another thing that can't pass today without being mentioned is that horrible shooting at the school in Uvalde, Texas. You know, it's too awful to contemplate, but we have to. We have to find a way to do something about this. It happens too often. And I know some people are saying, well, we should give our school teachers machine guns. Margie says no. I'm sure the rest of you say no also. You know, it's, it, it's, it's not the right answer. So what is the right answer? I don't know. But we got to do something. We have to find a way to help with the mental health crises that some people are in in this country. And we've got to find a way to register gun ownership and license it and, you know, tax it and stuff like that. Maybe if we said we were going to tax it, everybody could agree. But all of it is a way to respect the bodies of children and people who are just trying to buy their groceries or people who are just coming to church. You know, last week it was Uvalde, Texas. Next week it could be Newton, North Carolina. I hope not. But this shouldn't be. So again, in the name of the risen and ascended Lord, may we find a way forward. Thanks be to God. Amen.
For our affirmation of faith, we have a selection from Scripture, and let us affirm our faith together. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess to the glory of God, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. seated. And let us pray. Our hearts are heavy, O God, and we cry out, how long, O Lord? How long do we have to live with the scourge of gun violence and school shootings. Lead us and lead our leaders to some reasonable policy that can lessen this plague. And our hearts are heavy as we look at the war in the Ukraine, O oh Lord. How long will we have to live with the aggression of the Russian leadership how long until peace will reign? Our hearts are heavy as we remember all of those who fought and died for our freedom from the beginning of our nation until now in places all over the world. Our soldiers have answered the call of duty even to death in the fight for peace. We give you thanks for them and for their sacrifice. And but we pray, come, O Prince of Peace, as you promised, and bring us true and lasting peace. And in the meantime, we work to feed the hungry and clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, to obey the word of Jesus in season and out of season. And hear our prayers, O God, for the sick, the suffering, the dying, and the grieving. Hear our prayers and grant us all the healing that we need, we pray. And pour out your Spirit upon us, so that we may be empowered to be your faithful disciples, and may serve your word until you come again. Hear us then in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
so go in peace. Go and serve the Lord in your body with your humanity. And as you go, may all the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and every day forever. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.